Today on Chris Performance Repair, we're going to go over a very interesting situation with the particular avalanche that I am in. I am in a Chevrolet avalanche that has a concern with the ABS and activating while accelerating. So basically what it's doing is, is engaging its traction control system without actually spinning the tires. And so this causes an issue because the person cannot accelerate onto a highway. Stay tuned. So you can see I am in the truck right now. Now this is a 2005 Chevrolet Avalanche, but this applies to pretty much every Avalanche there is, or pretty much any GM truck there is in general. I have my scanner out and running right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the actual symptom before I show you the diagnostic of finding the problem for the symptom. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get started with this. Um, I'm gonna let you guys watch the acceleration of what I'm doing and when it does what it does. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out on the street here and take off and just watch the acceleration. Now it looks pretty normal because I'm light on the throttle. Right now it is not doing it very severe, but it did do it a little bit right there. So I'm gonna come to a stop. There's no one behind me to worry about. And I'm gonna go ahead and accelerate again. I'm gonna accelerate a little bit harder this time. Not much, and it still did it, but not very much. So right at this particular moment in time, it is not doing it very hard or very bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and record a little audio clip here. I'm gonna shove the phone underneath the dash where it seems like it's the loudest because it's by the brake pedal, and let you guys take a listen. Okay, so hopefully you guys could hear that pretty clearly. Uh, I'm gonna try and edit that in certain areas. So now, now that you heard that, um, you can hear what it's doing. So basically what it's doing is it, it's activating the ABS and preventing the throttle from pushing down harder in some cases. Uh, at this point in time, it is actually allowing the throttle to still go down, even though it's activating the ABS, which is a little weird. But uh, basically what it has happening is it thinks that there is a wheel that is spinning uh, faster than the others. And this is a truck with the auto four-wheel drive and the push button four-wheel drive system. So, oh, that time it activated the ABS as I was coming to a stop. You can see that, I gotta check that scanner quick, now that I think about it. Okay, so you can see, I have three different numbers or three different lines here. These are all the different speed sensors. We have the left front, right front, and rear wheel speed sensor. And we're looking at all three at the same time. So these lines will move accordingly. I'm gonna go ahead and slow it down a little bit. There we go. And then I'll let you guys watch that as I take off here and come up to another stop sign. Well, that time the tire actually spun, so I don't know what I was on, slimy leaves or something. Okay, so as you guys can see right now, I am accelerating and then hitting the brake and accelerating and hitting the brake and I'm just kind of doing this back and forth. And you can see when I accelerate, there's a little spot of one line that is delayed and a slower response than the rest of the sensors. That is the one that is causing the issue. Now, that is the dark blue line and the dark blue line is for the left front wheel speed sensor. So that is the one that is showing its delay. And uh, that is the sensor that we wanna go after. That is gonna need a either a wheel bearing or a sensor or both. But uh, I'm gonna get this truck up on the hoist and take a look at the wheel speed sensor, the wheel bearing, whatever, what have you, and see what I can come up with. Oh, there we go, it did it really good right there. You can see the 
obvious a blue line that's dipped away below the other two lines that are matched perfectly. So there you have it. There is the issue. So now we have to go ahead and address this issue. Now that we are all diagnosed, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this wheel bearing in. You can see I have this BXT, so Bearing Extreme Technologies. I don't know, it's a cheaper wheel bearing. This is one of those deals where they don't want to spend any money, so we have a cheap wheel bearing. Uh, we're going to go ahead. It's, it's from Mevotech, so I don't know. They, they're a good company, but this is a cheaper wheel bearing, so I don't know. We'll see what that looks like later when I go to put it in. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started. We'll, we'll throw me in the corner here. and. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and take things apart. We're going to start off with taking off the axle nut, obviously, and then the brake system, and then we'll get the bolts that are in the very back here. So I'm going to grab some tools, and as you guys can see, I'm already started on it, and we'll get it taken apart here real quick and show you guys what the sensor looks like. So we have the new bearing out of the box. Here is the old shield. This goes behind the bearing. And uh, I already cleaned it up and sprayed it with some of that NAC stuff. So just don't forget to clean that guy up and then do that. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and compare the bearings here quick just to be sure that we got the right one. And that it looks like a decent quality bearing. So we'll see here. Take a quick peek. So I'm going to flip it on its side here first. And we're going to see what we can notice. I see a difference right off the bat. So this one has some kind of a dust shield thing attached to it, which is quite interesting. Uh, whereas this one does not. It's that tan colored thing there. So that's a little bit of a change. I, I would imagine that's maybe an improvement, but I don't know, maybe later down the road when this starts to rust, it'll start rubbing on that. I don't know, that's, that's a question. I see that this cage for the bearing material is smaller, it's, it's shorter than this one. That tells me that the bearing is also smaller. Oh yeah, the bearing is definitely smaller. So that is why this is much cheaper, is because the bearing has less material to it. This sticks out farther than this one does, but that's of course because the cage of the bearing on this one is thicker. So with the smaller bearing, you have this one sticking out more. The flanges, it appears, yep, the flange on the old one is thicker. So there's another spot that they reduced cost. So they made that smaller, so less material needed. Everything else looks pretty darn similar though. Oh, it's got a different style bearing in here because this, this whole flange setup, the way it's pressed together is different as well. So it must have a different type of bearing along with different material. That's a, quite a bit different, but I'm sure it'll bolt in just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this guy bolted in. Now when you do these, obviously it's reverse of install. I'm not even gonna bother showing you, but I wanna note that there are a couple critical things you need to do. The bolts that go into here, you wanna make sure that you torque those down evenly. You know, look up the spec, find the torque spec, torque them down to what they're torqued to. Usually, this isn't a promise, usually they're around 80 foot pounds. Now, take that with a grain of salt. It's probably not 80 foot pounds. It's just gonna be close. I'll have to look it up before I do it. Also, make absolutely certain that you torque this nut. This nut is very, very critical. So this nut here is the one that applies the squeeze to the bearing that's in here. So if this bearing has any kind of a, a squeeze requirement, that nut is what determines how long that bearing is gonna last because it gives the bearing its preload. So that is hugely important and as well as these bolts that I mentioned torquing just a second ago, these bolts, if you don't torque these evenly, for instance, and you say this one's 130 foot-pounds and this one's only 40 foot-pounds, what'll happen is it'll, it'll start to distort the metal and then it'll create an uneven bearing cage. Once the bearing cage is uneven, of course, the bearing will prematurely wear and die sooner. The other thing that is important is these guys here, these shields, you want to be sure that when these things are on here <clears throat> that you don't have any dirt and debris between the shield and the bearing or the shield and the steering nuzzle. If you get anything in there, that's why I clean this up and anti seize it. That way nothing is trapped in there. And if you have anything in there, it will also distort that cage as well. 
be sure to torque all bolts and the large nut along with cleaning the surfaces to make sure you're not going to distort it. Now, I used a super scraper to clean the surface of the steering knuckle where this flange actually goes against because I do not want to use a whiz wheel so that I don't distort or take out too much material in one spot. If you use a whiz wheel, you could actually create divots and stuff in there which will also cause the cage to distort. So those are my helpful tips for you guys when you put this in. Uh, we'll get, I'll go ahead and get this in and I'll take you guys out on the road and we'll go on a test drive to watch the live scan data and see if the problem is fixed. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right guys, we are on the test drive now. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a look at what the live data is doing for the ABS because I have solved the problem by replacing that wheel bearing as expected. So we'll go ahead and give you guys a look at what it should be doing rather than what it was doing when it was broken. All right, I'm coming up to a stop here. Uh, you can see the wheel speed slowing down. And let's see what happens when I accelerate. Now you can see they are all nice and even. There's no deviation on any of the lines there. They're all staying intact and with each other. So we'll do it one more time just to verify. See some of them deviated there at the top of that area. And I wanted to show you guys one more thing here. And uh, basically it's when it comes to going around a corner what happens. So you'll see I'm going on a left hand turn and you're going to see the left wheel slows down, the right wheel speeds up, and the rear wheel is actually your average. So if I go look up there, we'll go ahead and do a really sharp turn. Maybe I'll even turn around here just for showing you guys. Let's go ahead and do a U-turn. So there you go, I did a left U-turn and turned around and you can see the difference there in wheel speed. So that's why these things are so sensitive and why they get affected so easily. Like all my videos, hopefully this was helpful to you. Like, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.